Now that we have the initial project set up, and the next step is we're going to create a component. I'm going to show you how to create both a function component and a class component. Personally, I prefer function component because I have more granular control over the hooks. So in version 16.9, uh, React added those hooks. And some people prefer class component. I prefer function component. I'll leave it up to you, but I'm going to show you two options. But mostly in this course, I'm going to show you using function component, but I want to show you both. How are we going to do that? Um, if I go to source, source, I have a component folder, and then I'm going to create another uh, directory here. I'm going to call it hello t3. That's going to be my folder. And inside the folder, I'm going to create a new file, and that's going to be my component, hello d 3 that tsx is going to be of type TypeScript, okay. And again, if you remember what we tr what I'm going to be building is this. I'm just going to create two rectangles and an hello world uh, text, and I'm going to show it in JSX and I'm going to show it with D3. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing is um, is I need to set up my component. So I'm going to um, call constant. I'm going to set up hello D3 equal my function. It's basically a function component, and inside I'm going to create a reference. So I'm going to create a constant, and the reference um, is going to allow me to keep track of my component. So um, what I'm looking for is, it's called the reference object. It's part of React. You see it's important us automatically. The type um, I'm going to be using, let's leave the any for now. I'll show you in a second. And then um, that's going to be, I'm going to use the uh, React create ref to create the reference. And then I need to um, return the, oops, I closed it. Then I need to return the um, JSX. So I'm going to use the return tag and inside of it, I'm going to put a div. Um, I'll give it a class name of hello d3 and I'm going to use the reference I set up here we go I'll close the tag like that it's going to need to import react as well Oops, let's see here we go so I'm importing react now the type it's better not to use any. So how do I know the, the type of this div? If I click on the div, you can see here it's of type HTML div element. So what I can do instead of setting it as any, I can just set it as HTML div element because I'm using it on that um, div component. Now this is just, you know, regular uh, JSX so far. Now if I want to use inside of my JSX SVG, um, I'm just going to set my SVG and you need to give it a width. I'm going to give it a width of 500 and a height of 500. Then um, next inside of my SVG, um, usually, you know, it's, it's common to create a group. That way you can actually group and translate and set the size of it. So I'm going to use a, a G tag and then transform. And the transform, I'm going to use the translate, and I'm going to set it as zero zero. And inside of that group, then I can put a rectangle. So if I put a rectangle again with the width of 500 and the height of 500. And inside, I'm going to use a fill so we can see the rectangle. Let's say I'm going to call it, I'm going to use a green and close that tag. And we need to, the only, I need to export that. So export default um, my component. Here we go. So let's see, we got one error. Let's see what the problem. No problem. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my entry point and I'm going to get rid of everything 
inside the header and then I'm gonna import that component hello d3 there you go we don't need the logo SVG because I deleted the code the vanilla code and now if I um, make sure it's running let's see okay here we go let's open up the local host and here we go we got a rectangle um, as a size of 500 500 by 500 and if you inspect it in uh, Chrome um, DevTool you can just select the element here we go we got um, a width of 500 and a height of 500. I'm doing a translate zero because I want to I want to occupy the whole space. And we got our our you know this is just basic um, React um, SVG. Um, the only difference is I'm setting a reference, and you're going to see in a little bit why. Now the next step is again if we look back at our um, at our image, the next step, so we got that 500 by 500 rectangle. Inside, I'm going to create another rectangle half the size of 250 by 250. Uh, but this time, instead of using um, React JSX code, I'm going to be using D3. Now, how I'm going to be doing that? Um, inside of my component, I'm going to use the use effect hook. So, use effect. Um, and inside of my hook, that's going to get called when the component is um, initialized. Later on, I'm going to show you how to memorize those use effects, you know, to make sure they're not running a few times at once and how to really work with D3 with React. But for now, we just want to, I just want to show you the basic. So instead of the, of my hook, I'm going to call it draw method and let's set up that draw method. That method is going to, I'm going to draw the same thing as I did with JSX, just this time with d3 so i'm going to create a, um, another function i'll use constant and my function i'm going to be using d3 um, so first of all i haven't done this yet so we need to um, include d3 in our library and um, in order to do that we need to do two things we can use yarn again or npn so i'm going to be using yarn add d3 and we also need to use the d3 um, the types so we can add all the different types when we're working with the uh, TypeScript um, now um, Here I'm going to import the entire d3 library, but from um, D3 version 4 and up they actually made a, a significant change in all the modules There's about 30 modules and thousands of uh, functions and you can actually download part of the module that you're using instead of using instead of downloading everything and using a lot of uh, um, um, space uh, in terms of kilobyte that's when you compile the project so later on when we good when we're gonna do optimization I'll show you how you can decrease the size but for now what we're gonna do I'm just gonna import all the d3 library so um, import everything as d3 from the D3 library, perfect. And now inside my draw, I'm going to use um, this module called select. And select, what it does, you can see here, it includes an element. So I can actually use the select. And inside, there's few ways that I can do that. First of all, I have this element that I created for the div. So if I want to add another SVG, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to select using the D3 my reference. And when I select um, the reference, um, one thing that that I need to do is I need to call the corn because that's how you set reference. In the reference, you set the corn. That's that's how React keep track of that hook, right? So um, one way to do this is I'm just going to call the reference corn, and then I can append. You can see the library. I can append a p tag and a text. And in my text, I'm going to type in hello world. Okay. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm selecting the reference that I said, that div, and I'm adding a P HTML tag. And inside of that tag, I'm setting the text to be hello world. So if everything worked correctly, and I um, go back to port 3000, 
Let's see. Oops, I have like three of them open. Okay, here is our hello world. So you can see it added our hello world um, inside that div. So that's, you know, basically it's an overkill, right? Because you're going to come and say, hey, why don't you just edit here after the rectangle? But you're going to see how it makes sense What we're gonna once we're going to um, start creating charts. So I just want to show you how to work with D3 in this, uh, you know, in this initial tutorial. So here we did just a PHTML element, but but uh, um, if you look at the at the final results, what we want to do is we actually also want a rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what you see that we're done with J6, but this time we're going to programmatically type it with D3. So again, we can do D3 dot select, and this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to instead of selecting the div, I'm going to select <clears throat> the SVG element. So so if you can see here with the select, there's few ways that I can use the the D3 select module. I can set the reference. I can call um, an HTML or any or SVG element that's already um, on on my uh, DOM. Um, here I got SVG, <clears throat> or there's two other ways that I can do it. I can also give the SVG an ID. So, for example, if I give the SVG an ID of, let's say, my SVG, I can select with the hash my SVG. So it's going to select that element. Now, another option is you can call class name, you know, in HTML it's called class in JSX it's called class name and I can set my for example if I set my class name is my SVG if I do a dot my SVG that's how um, D3 will um, use that to go into the DOM and select that element I usually prefer to use um, classes when you modify element and ID when 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 I append or select element but I'm just showing you all the options that you have in our option, since we have only one SVG on the screen, I can just do select SVG, right? Now, once I select it, again, I'm going to append. As you can see here, I have a group, so I'm going to append a group. I can put it in the next line, so it's a little bit more neat. And after I'm selecting the group, you can see um, I'm also having... Um, I can set an attribute to match what I have in JSX, which is the transform. So the attribute, I'm just keeping the chaining. So you see I didn't break the chaining. I, I select the element, I append the group, and now I can actually set the transform and set it with the translate. So I'm basically mimicking the same code that I have here. Here we go. And um, so I'm setting the attribute with the name transform and the value of translate. Now, next is, if you look back at the code, after that I have uh, the G element and then I have the rectangle. So to do the rectangle, again, I'll append an SVG of type rectangle, right? And now I, I'll set the attribute. And the attribute that I want is I want to set the width to 500. To 500 and an attribute for the height 500 and the height 500 the only difference is that on the transit I'm going to use 250 so it's only going to take half the screen instead of taking the whole screen right and the last thing is, let's just check it. I want I want you to see how it looks now. Okay, here we go. So you can see it's did the work and it's using the default fill, which is a black color. So let's just add a fill. Now in terms of the fill, again, I can use the attribute or the style. I'll show you both ways. So for now, let's just use the style, the attribute, and let's call it tomato, the color. Now if I go back into, you can see here um, that I 
basically I have the green um, rectangle that covers 500 by 500 and then I have um, another rectangle that covers 250 and if you look at the again if we look at the inspect in Chrome DevTools you can actually see our element here created so we basically almost mimic the exact same code this time in D3 so this is like a basic way of how I'm basically utilizing React in order to um, take advantage of the hook once the hook is being called using the use effect um, and I can limit that I'll show you later in the in other you know as we go along with the course I'll show you how to limit it and how to track that um, and then we we have that um, the rectangle that we added it this time programmatically 